All right, let's jump right into this. All right, guys. So I'm going to try to respect your time. This presentation, uh, depending on how much we communicate, how many questions are asked, could be a little bit longer than normal. Um, but let's dive right in. So this training is on seven creative ways to get more students for your tutoring business. Um, so yeah, so in this training, I'm going to cover a few different ways that you can grow your tutoring business. Um, the very first thing that you guys want to consider is who your ideal customer is. Um, because before starting any sort of marketing strategy or, um, you know, lead campaign or, or, or you want to go into the marketplace and actually attract customers, you want to talk about who your ideal customer is. Because at the end of the day, I mean, there's, there's a strategy called the spray and pray method, which is that a lot of people out there, what they do is they just put their marketing everywhere and then they pray they get a customer, right? But uh, real marketers, they don't market that way. What they do is they figure out who their uh, customer is, what their customer avatar looks like. Um, and some companies will actually put a name to it. They'll be like, okay, hey, this is Susan. You know, she's a parent, she's a soccer mom, the kids love sports, she has three kids, um, her and her, you know, she's married, et cetera. And you really wanna learn who your customer is um, and who the customer is that you wanna serve. Because for example, if you're a tutor and you serve, for example, college students, right? That's going to be a completely different strategy, different customer avatar than if you're going after, you know, parents who have kids who are from eight to 15, right? And they're going to hang out at different locations. So for example, if you're, you know, if you're going after college students, I mean, you're obviously going to want to be at the colleges. You want to have, you know, marketing material um, that's catered to students who are in school and struggling as opposed to trying to solve problems for parents who they're the people paying you, but the actual you know, customer is the child, right? So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna identify your ideal customer before you do any of these marketing strategies and it's gonna be much more effective for you um, and all of your efforts are gonna uh, be much more effective, right? So cool. So after you've actually identified who your ideal customer is, which I think a lot of you guys on this call most likely know because you guys are already tutors and have students. And so you have an idea of who you're going for. You're going to want to decide where you're going to market to them. Right. Um, just like like we spoke about, for example, like if uh, again, if you're going after college students, you're going to be one of like around where college people, college students hang out at. Right. Local coffee shops, colleges, stuff like that. If you're going after parents who have kids. Um, and disposable income, you're probably going to want to be, you know, around, you know, networking with like salons um, and different places where, you know, moms are going to be hanging out and congregating, right? Like uh, here, for example, we have like an adventure park. Um, and that's like basically like a little amusement park where there's tons of kids, tons of parents. And so that would be a fantastic place for me to, to try to connect with and, and network with that you know, company and see if we can come to some agreement where I can market to them and, and we have some type of mutual, you know, benefit kind of relationship going on there. So um, these tips are going to provide you with some options. Now, um, there's going to be seven different things that we're going to be talking about on this call. Um, and you can use one of these or you can use all of them. Choose what feels right for you. And, and, and there's going to be some free methods and some paid methods, right? So what I typically like to do if you're just starting out is I like to start and just hustle with the free methods. So the free methods are going to be more hard work, more hustle, more grinding. But when you get a few students, you start getting some income, then transition over to some of the paid methods. Um, and the idea is if you're doing, you know, all seven of these things, you know, let's, you know, it's, students are going to start to trickle in. Let's say, for example, you're doing all seven things and each, each avenue, each marketing avenue, that you're, um, you know, promoting gets one student for you a month, right? Well, that's seven students a month now because they're trickling in from all these different methods and strategies and techniques. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. So let's dive into some of the strategies. So the very first one, uh, which might seem basic, but I know a lot of people actually neglect this, is actually start with your inner circle, right? Which is like your family, your friends, people you work with, people you know, you know, maybe the plumber, um, your friends on Facebook. This is a huge untapped marketplace, right? And so the reason a lot of people neglect this 
is because they're scared that they're going to be pushy. They don't want to sell to their family. They don't want to sell to their friends, right? And the thing is, is you don't actually have to sell them. Like what you could do, I mean, the call could be something like this, like, you know, hey, you know, hey, mom, um, check it out. I'm doing this new thing. Um, as you know, you know, I've been, I've been, you know, studying math or I've been doing this or doing that. And so I have a skill and I know right now there's a lot of people who need help. So, hey, if you know anyone that, uh, you know, has a kid who's struggling in school, like, would you mind just handing them over my information and, and seeing if maybe we can help them out? And, you know, I'm going to treat them with the same respect I would treat you, mom. So, um, you know, don't worry about me hassling them or anything like that. But if you could just relay my inf information over to the people you know, um, that'd be fantastic. Could you do that for me? And of course, it's your mom. She'd be like, yeah, I love you. Oh my God, this is fantastic, right? So, um, so yeah, so now you're going to be starting to tap into these people's network, right? And so you, so you don't have to just go for the sell, but just let them know what you're doing, you know, what you're trying to do. Um, and these people are going to be the people that are going to go back for you, right? Like your friends are going to be like, oh my God, like, um, you know, Michael here, he's, he's doing this tutoring thing. Like, I know you, like, you got to call him. Um, so these are the, the people that you want to tap into first, right? And again, that's a free strategy. So this is something that I know a lot of people don't do and they don't even start with, um, but it's definitely an untapped um, network of people that you can, you can tap into today. So um, now talking about actually tapping into your Facebook uh, friends, this is an example. If you want to take a, a picture of this or a screenshot or write this down or whatever, um, this is actually um, an example of something you could, you could post and, and hopefully get a little bit of buzz about what you're, what you're doing, right? So um, and you can modify this to make it sound like you. Um, this, would, this is obviously going to sound like me. You could change it and use, you know, your language and, and make, it, make it feel more natural to you. But I want to share something exciting, right, and super dramatic with these, like, sirens. I've been studying XYZ for years now, and I want to be able to help others who may struggle with it. So I'm letting everyone know on my Facebook that if you or someone you know could use some extra help, I've opened up 10 spots for tutoring, right? If you, if you don't need help, or know of anyone, sharing this post with your friends would mean the world to me. Thanks guys, I'm really excited. Post something like that um, and, and see what happens. You know, maybe some people engage, they'll share it with their friends and now you start spreading the word slowly um, and every bit helps, especially in the beginning. Um, cool, so on to marketing strategy number two. Um, it's just basic guerrilla marketing. Flyers, knocking on doors, postcards, business cards. Now, business cards, I actually don't do in the traditional sense. Um, and I'll talk about that here in a second. But like flyers, I mean, uh, flyers are, I'm sorry. Oh, did somebody say something? No? Okay, cool. So flyers um, are really cool. Like, especially if you're, if you're advertising in your local market, these are things that you just want to have everywhere, right? In your local grocery store, um, something that I used to do, which actually worked quite well, it's quite interesting is, um, I'd go into like the restroom stalls and I'd actually put my flyer on the stall door. So when someone would be using the restroom, they would look at my flyer, they'd be staring at it. Um, and you'd be surprised. I actually got some phone calls with that. So, you know, try that at your own risk. Um, I don't know if the, if the owners of the restaurants actually like that or not, but I was just trying to grind it out in the beginning, knocking on doors. This is something that's super intimidating to a lot of people, um, and I get it. But like, what I would do is I would go into like uh, areas that had a little bit more money, they had like a public park, they had like a lot of kids around and stuff. And I would just knock on doors, and I would just be like, "Hey, you know, my name is uh, Richard, and I'm, I actually started a tutoring center, and I'm just trying to help the community." Um, and I would pass them a flyer and say, "Hey, if you know anyone, it'd be fantastic. If you have anyone who could use some help." Um, and so for about every hundred doors I knocked on, I got one to two people to actually, you know, take on some interest in the tutoring. And so, and who knows how that effect happens. I mean, there could be someone who has a flyer on the counter, um, a neighbor comes and visits, you know, and they're drinking their wine or whatever. And they say, Hey, what is this? And they say, Oh, some dude left me their flyer and boom. Now, you know, Hey, can I take that home? And, and now it's, it's kind of getting the, the worst, but I like that. So these are slower methods, but they work postcards, something that I used to do. Um, this was pre-COVID when there was like a lot of events and stuff, but like a lot of the high schools and stuff, when there was sporting events and stuff, I would actually take uh, postcards and I would go put it on all, like I'd go to the parking lot and just put on every single window that was there, just every single window. Cause I knew that most of those people were going to be parents uh, watching their kids games or whatever. Um, now this, this is 
probably frowned upon. So do that at your own risk. I'm not really advising anyone to do that, but um, it's something that I did and I assume that risk. Um, and, you know, again, slow trickle, but, but it worked. Now, um, here's an example of a flyer that, um, that, that I actually use and, and I passed out and I would give them to the schools and, and I would just pass them on everywhere I have. I actually have one of these flyers on my front desk right now. And basically it just has a big pain point. Like, hey, is your child struggling with virtual learning, right? Your logo's up here. Um, and they don't have to, we make it easier for them and for you, right? Cause I'm obviously going after parents. Um, I have a picture of like the kind of like ideal customer I'm going, I'm going after parents who have kids roughly this age. Um, homework test taking da, da, da. I have some testimonials, which are fantastic. And then I have a call to action, right? Call me today and let's talk about how we can help your child succeed. And then I'll have my, my phone number and my, my website, my email, whatever you want to have there. Make sure you have a call to action, like call me today, tell them what to do. Uh, awesome. Now, so when it comes to business cards, I am actually a fan of a digital business card. And I actually learned this from a guy um, at a conference long, 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 long time ago in Vegas um, by a guy named Chris Record. And he talked about this thing called the digital business card, because when you pass out business cards, you know, these days, a lot of times they're lost, they're thrown away, they're just put, you know, amongst a hundred other business cards people have. So what I actually like to do is I actually open up a note on my phone. Um, and it'll already have this pre-filled out so you can copy and paste it. And if you meet someone, like let's say you're in the grocery store in your line and, and you start, you know, you, you drum up a conversation and you start talking about how you're a tutor. They're down there. Hey, you know what? I would love, do you have a business card? Um, I would say, you know what? I do, but it's actually a digital business card. Do you mind if I text that to you? They say, yeah, of course, text it over to me. Um, and the cool thing is because now you actually have that person's number so you can follow up with them. And they now just turned into a lead um, that I don't recommend, you know, harassing or anything, but it's someone who you could follow up with and potentially get, get them as a lead here too as well. So what I do is keep it super simple. You could have a little message like, you know, hey, Susie, it was great meeting you today in the grocery store. I wanted to send this over to you. And you just have your tutoring business name, your email, your phone number, which I mean, you don't have to, I mean, they obviously have your phone number now. Um, and then I would basically at the very bottom of it, I just have like a link to some lead magnet or, or something that I've created that could be useful to them and just say, hey, check it out. You know, you can download my free thing here. Um, and a, a good percentage of those people will actually click that link, give you their email, and then boom, now you can put them on an email sequence da, 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 and actually turn them into um, a lead. And this is from someone who was just simply in line at a grocery store, right? So it's a really, really cool way. And it's cool because it makes you unique. A lot of people do not do this. I actually know nobody that does it other than myself. Um, and so people are actually quite impressed by this. So, so cool. So marketing strategy number three is uh, social media. So uh, basically you want to have a Facebook and Instagram, a YouTube, a TikTok, TikTok's blowing up, a Pinterest, right? Now, um, so this is a tip here. I want to talk about this because I, I highly recommend starting off with just one of these, picking the one that you like the most. It doesn't matter. There's no better one than another. Um, and then later, as you've mastered one and you've become consistent with one, add in another one and then another one and another one. If you try to do all of these at once, you're going to be overwhelmed. You're going to be inconsistent. You're not going to be doing it because it's just too much. So pick one uh, social media that you want to be all over. Um, and start with that, right? So um, again, you're better off doing one or two really well um, than doing all of them mediocre, right? Um, so a couple tips on social media, post consistently uh, one to three times a day if possible. I get it, a lot of people are gonna think that's a lot, but it, I, trust me, I promise you it's not, especially the way that they throttle your, organics, your organic reach post as much as possible. It's, if it's Instagram, I mean, I honestly, if you want to really build an audience, um, five to seven times a day, just like post every couple hours, boom, boom, boom. Um, and that's how you're going to grow your audience and do it every single day. And you'll see, um, you'll see true growth. So um, when applicable, make your banner with a call to action. So this is a banner, like for example, on your Facebook page or on your Facebook groups or whatever you have, if there's a place to put a banner, have a call to action in it. Like, hey, um, you know, click the link, you know, on this page and give me a call today, right? You want to have some call to action. So when people visit your page, they're, um, they're told to do something, right? So 
mix up the types of posts that you create, right? So you don't always just want to say, hey, I'm a tutor. Hey, call me, call me, I'm a tutor, I'm a tutor, right? So you want to, you know, blog posts are great. You want to uh, provide tips and and different things that people can do to, to um, you know, help them solve their problems, lead magnets, video posts. Like you want to mix this up, like, you know, motivational quotes, you know, wh whatever you want to do, just mix it up. Don't always be doing the same thing all the time. Um, cool. Go live once a week if possible. I understand going live can be scary for people. Um, if, if you're that scared of it, um, you don't necessarily have to, but I recommend trying to get comfortable on camera because uh, especially in the world we live in right now, the video is everything. Social media is like the new TVs, the new televisions, the new commercials, right? Like social media, people sometimes don't take it so seriously, but now for, for a couple bucks a day, you can reach massive amounts of audiences, right? That you weren't able to before. So going live um, is great. Talking about different ways that, you know, uh, parents can help their kids at home and, and, and all kinds of, of cool stuff. And it really provides value and it gets a way for people to build a relationship with you, people that watch you. And, and the, the thing is, is like in the beginning, when you do your very first one, you might have nobody there, right? Which is cool because now you're getting practice going live and there's, there's nothing scary going on, right? No one's there, which is fine. But over time, people will want to join. So um, always provide value to your audience, which should be a given. Use hashtags on Instagram. Now, if you don't want to go do your own research on, on which hashtags are trending and working and, and et cetera, um, I actually use this link here. It's just best-hashtags.com. And you can actually just type in a keyword. It'll spit out a bunch of uh, hashtags for you to use. And, um, and you don't even have to think about it. Just copy, paste those onto your post, and, and you're all set. Cool. Marketing strategy number four, guys, um, it's email marketing, right? So this is something that you should be doing from day one. I cannot stress this enough. It's something that I didn't start doing from day one, but if I could go back and start my business from day one, this is something that I would do, okay? Um, email marketing is something most tutors neglect, but it's super, super important. I promise you, anybody that's on this call, I, I'm almost willing to bet money that you don't do email marketing. If you do, kudos to you, but most people don't, okay? So a couple tips for email marketing is you wanna be growing your email marketing list daily. How, I mean, you can do it organically, you can do it with paid ads. Typically some sort of lead magnet offers some sort of value in exchange for an email, right? Um, just like I do. So send out a minimum of one newsletter a week, right? So typically pick a day, like for example, Friday, let's say just Friday at 5 p.m., I'm going to send out a newsletter every single week and just commit to it. It's like something you do. It's like eating. It's like breathing. It's something you now do. Um, send value with a call to action in every single email. Um, a lot of people, they, they say like, don't send, you know, don't have call to actions in every single one. I, I say do it. I say have a call to action in every single email with a form of value. Right. So send some really valuable information, something that people are going to enjoy reading, something people are going to get value from. And at the end, say, hey, book a call with us today if you'd like us to help. Hey, you know, book a free assessment today if you want to see where your child's at, et cetera. Right. Use catchy subject lines. At the end of the day, if you're sending emails and no one's opening them, they're pointless. Right. So you want to have some type of hook. You want to hook them in to actually opening that email and then getting them to read it, okay? Use storytelling in your email marketing. And this is actually for marketing in general. Storytelling is something that's incredibly uh, underused because a lot of people, they just um, either don't know it's a thing or, 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 or for whatever reason, they're not using it, but storytelling is huge. So like one person could say, you know, a child came in and they're doing fantastic now, let us help your kid. Another one can say, hey, you know what, Johnny and his parent walked through the front doors um, and they came in and Johnny was a little bit hesitant at first. He looked sad. He didn't want to be here. Um, he hated school, in fact. And so I was speaking to the parents and et cetera. And so you can tell a story, right? You can paint a picture in that person's mind and you want these stories to be relatable to your audience, right? Most of the people that are going to be reading these stories are going to be like, you know what, that's me too. Um, let me help, okay? Or, or, or let me ask them for help. Um, if you think you're emailing too much, trust me, you're not. I promise you, you are not emailing people enough. I mean, some of the best marketers in the world, 
a lot. I mean, they'll send one or two emails a day. Trust me, if you think you're emailing too much, you are not, okay? So here's an example of an email that I sent out that got a very, very high response rate. Um, this is one of my students, Patrick. Um, he's hilarious, I love this guy. So basically just say, hey, you know, first name. <coughs> Today, I gotta do a little bit of bragging. I hope that's okay. One of our high school students who we've been working with for nearly two years got accepted to a bunch of different colleges and picked one today. That's so exciting. Seeing our students become successful and go off to do great things is something we want for each and every one of our students. Put this really cool picture uh, of him here. Uh, you know, he's been coming to tutoring twice a week and has absolutely paid off. Good job, man. Keep up the great work, Richard, right? And then boom, call to action. P.S. Would you like to book a call to see if we can help your child with school and get them into the college of their dreams? Click this link to book a call today, right? So nothing simple, nothing crazy, not this massive email that took me, you know, 14 days to write. Just simple, um, clean, and it works. Cool. Marketing strategy number five. So search engine optimization. Um, you'll, you'll hear that referred to as SEO, S-E-O. So this is a long-term strategy that you should begin ASAP. So typically when you start um, a proper SEO optimization strategy, typically it's gonna take six to nine months to rank, okay? So um, search engine optimization refers to getting your website ranked in Google. So for example, let's say a parent it, it types in, you know, best online math tutors, right? You're gonna want your website to come up. So when they're searching that key phrase into Google, your website will appear somewhere up there and they can find you, go to your website and hopefully contact you, right? So um, here's an example. Some of the searches for best math tutors, you like to get your website to be on the top search results, right? Now there's two ways to SEO. So I'm not gonna talk about how to do SEO because it, it can be um, quite detailed. It can be quite intense. I'll probably do a training on this uh, one of these days, but you can either learn SEO and do it yourself or you can outsource your SEO. Um, and this is what I did. So I actually have, right now, I have a small group of people that do my SEO for me. Um, but uh, uh, a warning about this. So I actually had to go through five different SEO companies before I got one that could do work um, the way that I wanted it to be done and actually get me results. So what I did was after the fourth one, I was like, okay, screw this. Uh, I'm getting like, you know, I, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what they're supposed to be doing. I'm just hiring these people blindly. So I actually went and learned SEO, um, learned what it entails, you know, how to rank a website. I learned the very minimum of what SEO entails. And then I went and hired my fifth person knowing and using that knowledge and it allowed me to pick an SEO team that um, I felt was gonna be able to accomplish what I wanted to accomplish. So hopefully that makes sense. So um, I'm actually part of the group that always believes that you should learn the skill first before you hire someone to do it, okay? And there's tons of resources on SEO. You could simply Google how to, how to learn it. You could go on YouTube, there's courses, there's all kinds of stuff, um, but SEO is, is very, very powerful and it's very important. So where can you find affordable people for SEO? You can use freelancer.com, which is where um, I actually hired my team, or you can use uh, fiverr.com, fiverr with uh, two R's and just simply search SEO, uh, SEO for websites, stuff like that, and you'll find a bunch of people that can do that for you. Cool. Marketing strategy number six. So um, paid advertising. So obviously, this is gonna uh, require an investment. It doesn't have to be a large investment though, but I highly recommend it. I've done free marketing and I have done paid marketing and every freaking time I will choose paid marketing, every single time, okay? So different places that you can pay to advertise, you can pay Facebook, you can pay Instagram, which is owned by Facebook. You could pay Nextdoor, which is actually cool. Like if you're a local tutor, um, not a bad idea. So check. Uh, look in the next door. You can do YouTube advertising, Google advertising, and retargeting advertising. Now, uh, one thing is you don't want to do any form of marketing without retargeting. If you're not retargeting, it's you, you might as well just give me a $20 bill and let me light it on fire. You'll get more use out of it because retargeting is really where it's at. So um, what I recommend is picking one of these to start with. Don't try to master them all. Don't try to put money into all of them. I mean, if you if you have a bunch of money, then go for it. But typically, I like to, if, if you focus on one form of advertising 
for two to three months and you really put your heart and your soul into it, you can become very, very good at it in two to three months. It's not going to take you years um, to be good at it, but it does. It's one of those skills that takes experience. It takes actually losing a little bit, bit of money and learning how proper advertising is done in order for it to eventually uh, be profitable for you, right? So um, there's all kinds of different, you can advertise on Pinterest, you can advertise all kinds of places, uh, but they're just some of the main ones. Now, retargeting is so important that I wanted to give you guys um, a couple ideas for retargeting. Now, if you don't wanna know what retargeting is, essentially retargeting is when somebody visits your website, somebody engages with an ad or engages with your Facebook page, you can actually send that specific person more ads to now get them into your world. I, I, I guarantee you guys have gone to Amazon, you've gone shopping, you've done something, and all of a sudden you pop up, you pop up in Facebook, and you're like, what the heck? I was literally just searching that, right? That's not coincidence, that's not by accident, that's by retargeting, okay? So retargeting ideas is an offer, literally an offer, hey, you know, why don't you try tutoring for, uh, you know, four hours for, for 97 bucks, you know, limited time only, whatever. Videos, hey, you know, I wanted to give you the, the top three tips that I've learned after tutoring for, for six plus years and helping hundreds of students on how your child can increase their confidence in math, right? FAQ, FAQs are fantastic um, retargeting as, hey, you know, I understand you haven't, you haven't signed up for tutoring yet. You may have a few questions. Well, here are the most common questions I get asked. I would like to address those here today, right? Content. Now, content, I put uh, these little things right here um, because content is so important, um, you know, especially now. Like in this day and age, if you're a company, if you're a, any sort of company out there, you need to be a media company. If you're not a media company, you're not doing, you're not playing the game right. You have to be producing content, high quality content, and you need to be providing more value than your competitors in order to stand out of the crowd, right? There's more tutors than ever in this day and age, especially now, especially after this whole, you know, uh, you know, coronavirus stuff. Like there's so many kids that need help. There's so many tutors out there. The marketplace is huge. You need to differentiate yourself by providing more value and by producing content that truly helps people is one of those ways. Testimonials, right, of parents saying, hey, you know what, I worked, I worked with Richard for the past two years, and oh my God, he's incredible, da 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 da, -da right? Uh, testimonials are fantastic. Third-party validation is always amazing. And then lead magnets, right? Hey, you know, check out this guide that I created for you, or check out this checklist that I created for you, once you download that today, um, and you'll get a bunch of value out of it, right? So those are some retargeting ideas, um, and I wouldn't even pick one. I would literally do all of them and retarget them like clockwork. Okay. So your last bonus tip for getting tutoring clients is no matter what marketing you do, when a lead comes in, you need to consistently and regularly follow up with those people. And this is something that 99% of tutors don't do. If a lead comes in and someone contacts you, there's some form of interest there. And not everyone's going to take action right away. So if you don't follow up, you're missing out on a massive amount of students that you could be working with, right? You do not want to waste a lead. Don't waste your leads, right? No matter what form of marketing you choose, you must nurture those leads that you get, right? Every lead is valuable, um, especially if they're inbound. If they reach out to you, there's a problem that they need solved. And it's your job to be able to build a relationship with these people and nurture that lead. So eventually when they're like, you know what? The pain is too much. I need a tutor for my child. They call you, okay? So awesome. So uh, thanks for joining this training, everyone. Uh, let's open up the floor for Q&A. So I'm actually gonna uh, stop sharing my screen here. And if you guys have any questions, uh, type them into the chat, let me know. We can have a conversation here. Um, I have a good 20 minutes that I could spend. If you guys don't have any questions, we'll call it. Um, but if you do, let me know. Uh, I'll wait here for a couple minutes and see if anything comes through. Anyone have any questions that I can help you guys with in your tutoring business or anything that was related to the training? Yes,
he now has sort of put Can you hear me? Yes. Hey, how are you doing, Trisha? Hey, I was just wondering, um, I had a phone call. I was listening to you in the car and I, so I missed all the way up. I got one and I got five. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so okay, anything, no. uh, I'll be posting this on, sorry. <laughs> I'm you posted sorry. on your Facebook? Is that what uh, you said? Yeah, I'm going to post it on YouTube. Um, okay, good. Today, so you'll be able to get the, get the replay. Okay, I'll listen to it again then later. All right, thank you. Awesome. Did you have a question or was that it? No, I just wanted to see if I could get your other tidbits, how you get clients. Oh, okay. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you, you're, you're also on the Smart Tutor system, right? Yeah, but I haven't had the time to finish it. I got all the, the different messages um, edited. Cool. But I wanted to find out, like it says plus one or plus two after the days. I didn't really understand. Is that, do I need to adjust that yet? I haven't watched all your videos yet, though. No, no, you don't. Absolutely not. So basically what that means is like, if it says plus one day, that means a day after the previous message, that one will be sent. Okay. So you keep bombarding them. <laughs> Depends on the sequence. So, but I wouldn't say it's bombarding. Yeah. Because we, so we mix it up between text messages and emails. And so like, as you know, email okay. is a lot less um, invasive. So we email them a lot more than we text them. Okay. And, and if there's yeah. anything in there that, that you're not comfortable with or you want to space it out even more, you're welcome to, to change that. Um, no, but yeah, I don't it, want to mess up the protocol. Yeah, I mean, I mean it, it works for me. I've never had really any complaints. And then if anyone does complain, um, they can just unsubscribe from your list and then no big deal, move on. Right. Okay, very good. Cool. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Okay. Take care. Bye. Bye. What's up, Michael? Do you have any questions for me? Well, you know, I am, um, I need to learn how to create, like, the lead magnet. The, like, I don't have, I have certain people emails, but I don't have anything to, like, say, like, content they can go to click on. Right. Uh, little, and then I was also trying to find good resources to pull information from, kind of like making my own. But a lot of stuff is um kind of hard to find. For me. Got it. Yeah. Give me give me one second, and I'll actually send you something real quick. Okay. Um. Yeah. If, if you don't have like some sort of some form of lead magnet man like you you have to get that let's see uh let me send this over to you right now uh, <laughs> uh thank you uh can, can you see that link right there that youtube video that i just sent you yeah i got it yeah so that's that's actually a training um that hillary's talking about that uh, i talk about how to create a lead magnet how to grow your email list how to do that whole thing uh, so check that video out and it'll answer most of your questions, man. Um, and if you have any other I questions, do. I mean, you're in, the, you're in the Facebook community. You could like, like bombard the freaking hell out of that group, man. That's why we're there. <laughs> and uh, you know what? And one problem I had was, and I saw where uh, one day that y'all were talking about, like, um, like if I wanted to try to get an assessment, to figure out okay where are their levels at to get started me I was going off of what the parent uh kind of mentioned and then I also asked them to ask the teacher but I don't feel as though they go back and go ask the teacher like what exactly they need help with right so I mean <clears throat> So we do offer an assessment, um, but most 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 of our parents won't don't really take it. Like, so we use if let me see real quick. I think it's called Doma Assessment. So I personally use yeah. Let's go learn. So 
I use this. Let's go learn. It's like 25 bucks uh, per assessment, mm-hmm. something like that. I So I just pass that on to the parents. There's some companies that'll say, hey, it's a hundred bucks for the assessment. They can make some money off of it. It's totally up to you. I personally don't. I just say, hey, look, we have this assessment. It's 25 bucks if you want it. It's We don't make any money off of it, um, but you're welcome to do it. And if they say, yeah, you just, um, it's, it's all done on the computer and it's cool. It's all like, it's, um, it's a digital assessment. So like, as they do good, um, the questions get harder as they make mistakes. And then it, at the very end, it gives you a comprehensive guide on exactly what they need help with by, mm-hmm. by subject. Um, but most of my tutors will just like day one kind of figure out where they're at. They'll say, Hey, you know, they'll, they'll give them some like questions, see if they're struggling with, you know, reading, reading comprehension or, or whatever that may be. Um, and then they'll just kind of uh, go off their own experiences and create a plan of uh, how to take them from where they are today to where they need to be without an assessment. If you're not comfortable doing that, I would just do the let's go learn, give them an assessment and you'll have everything you need to know. Well, that's what I was doing, the kind of like getting a feel for what they know and kind of like going from there. I, I think but, that's perfectly fine. Are, are you not comfortable with that method? Oh, I mean, I'm comfortable with it, but I just wanted to see if there was maybe an easier method to try to, you know, maybe, you know, all us creative minds in the group probably figure out something, you know. Yeah, man. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, you're welcome to, to, to see what other people's thoughts are. Uh, me, typically, I, I think it's always good, like, as you build a relationship with your student to just kind of mm-hmm. learn where they're at, how they struggle, how they learn. Cause like at the end of the day, that assessment's gonna, gonna show you gaps, but it's not gonna show you how that student learns um, right. because every, every student's a little different, right? Some students are gonna be super hands-on, stu- super visual. Um, and then other students are gonna be like auditory, right? They're gonna wanna listen to you and that's how they're gonna learn. So um, I, I think what you're doing is fine. I mean, as long as you, I mean, are you seeing improvement with, with your students? Oh, I see. I'm seeing a tremendous improvement. Then I, I think the results speak for themselves. I think what you're doing is, is fantastic, man. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, man. Was there anything else I could help you with? Uh, I probably got to, if I come up with some more questions, I can I'll shoot you a text. Yeah, man. Shoot me a text um, or, or post it in the Facebook group just so everyone can benefit. Um, okay. And then also, um, I'm doing these trainings every Friday, so I hope I hope I'll see you there. Okay. All right, my man. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. All right. Thank you too. All right. See you, everyone.